Hello, welcome back to Testable Faith. I'm Jeff Zwerink, your host today. I'm joined here in studio by Dr. Kevin Birdwell. He's one of our members of our scholar community who's visiting us here with the Visiting Scholar Program. And we're going to be talking about nuclear waste today. Kevin, good to have you back in the studio again. Thank you. It's good to be back. So, you know, most people, given that Simpsons have been on the air now for better than 25. Actually, it was there when I was in college. So we're coming up on 30 years that the symptoms have been running. Yeah, you know, you've got nuclear waste. Nuclear waste is this green goo or these nice glow-in-the-dark pellets that end up getting carried around. I imagine a lot of people have that imagery. But when we're talking about nuclear waste, what is it actually that we're dealing with there? Uh, it's really solid. And, and it's put in these dry caskets that are just about impenetrable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've crashed them in trucks and trains and, 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 you know, and they, they do what they're supposed to do. They contain the waste, uh, but it's definitely not in liquid form. Okay. So we store all of the spent fuel in caskets, these solid caskets, uh, you kind of, what's the scale, what's the size of one of these caskets, if you would, roughly? I would say roughly 10 feet or more tall, and it's going to vary somewhat okay. by, by the use, but um, they're very well tested and and very durable, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, crashing trains, that kind of thing. Right. So this isn't something we've got barrels sitting in some warehouse somewhere leaking and oozing goo out. I mean, how much are we talking about here of the, the spent fuel we have? What would it take to store all that we have at this point? I believe point? the number is 90,000 metric tons, and okay. um, it would fit on something like a football field, maybe 30 feet high. Uh, at the most. Okay. So, so it's, a, it's a lot, but not an enormous amount. That's actually a smaller than I would have expected it to be. Right, right. And, okay. And so when we're talking about uh, the spent fuel, are these things, I mean, could I go stand next to these things? Are they radioactive or uh, what? You really probably could. Okay. I mean, uh, the, the containment is very good. And um, I don't know the exact number of, but it's very, very low. Um, it's kind of the same as for a nuclear power plant. And when a nuclear power plant is in operation, you're not going to get radiation standing next to it. I mm -hmm. mean, it, in fact, you'd get more from a coal plant because there's radioactivity in the coal. So I think the same is true with these, these casks. They, they design them that way so that they're safe to transport. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, they're intended to be stored somewhere. But uh, hopefully what we get to later is what we can do with them. Well, that, that's actually an interesting question because, you know, there, there has this sense of n nuclear waste, like it's like it's this garbage that you kind of throw out. It, that's that seems to have a little different connotation than what you're describing here. I mean, OK, we're we're done being able to use them in the reactor itself. Are, are they is it waste? Is it something we just throw away it's, or is that not the right way to look at it? It's really not. I mean, there's still uranium uh, contained in that. There's other isotopes. Uh, like like cesium and strontium, mm -hmm. uh, and some actinides, um, things like americium and curium. But the, no, those th that's interesting. You list those because those tend to be those are the sorts of nuclear or uh, radioactive sources that I used in physics labs, and I think they use them in medical uses too. So, is the nuclear reactors actually producing these radioisotopes that we use for that? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's part of the process of splitting the atoms and getting all the products out of that. Uh, but the, the thing to realize about, about this material is it's really not waste because, mm -hmm. in fact, those in the nuclear industry really don't like the term waste. Uh, they usually use the term spent fuel. Okay. Because as nuclear reactors are set up today... Uh, they're in solid form. The fuel's in solid form, and it, they're usually um, contained in like a zirconium alloy uh, casket, mm -hmm. a little rod. So these uh, are the fuel rods. That right, the fuel rods. About. And um, as they're bombarded by neutrons to burn the fuel, uh, these, these deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And so after, say, maybe a couple of years in the reactor, they're no longer useful, even though 98% of the fuel, potential fuel, is still there. So they have mm. to remove them. So it's, so the fuel's still there. It's the containment for the fuel that tends to go bad, if that, if I get what you're saying correctly. Most of the time, I mean. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, it's... So if you say there's 98% there, that's still a lot of the fuels left. 
Yes. And, and so really this spent fuel has the potential to be reused. Mm -hmm. But right now processing involves, um, a fairly detailed, uh, chemical process involving mm -hmm. nitric acid and, and, <laughs> Uh, organic solvents and other things. And, um, and so most of the time the, the spent fuel or waste is not reused. It's just stored, uh, somewhere. And, but the potential is there to reuse mm -hmm. it if it was economically viable to do that. So, you know, it, it, it's always struck me that, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I mean, we've got all of this uranium that's stored around somewhere, that the moment you've taken all of the effort to concentrate it, it seems like that would be useful at some place. Is there a way to make this useful either for some other purpose or even in nuclear reactors? Well, if you can, uh, if you can dissolve it into liquid form, then it would be much easier to reuse it. And that's exactly what um, molten salt reactors can potentially do. And actually, mm. these are not new. Mm -hmm. uh, they were invented as early as the 1960s. And in fact, in Oak Ridge, there was an experimental one running for about four years, very successfully. Right. Um, and so I would say in the last 10 years, there's been a, a renewed interest in these types of reactors. And there are actually uh, researchers today, I, I think Idaho National Lab and other places that are um, building molten salt reactors uh, for this very purpose of burning the U.S.'s stockpile of spent fuel mm. and, and being able to use it for power and other useful purposes. And so in this case, I think they're using a molten chloride salt mm -hmm. um, that um, works well with what's called a fast spectrum. So in, in nuclear energy, you have what's called the thermal spectrum and the fast spectrum and the thermal spectrum. Uh, so, so essentially what you're doing in nuclear fission is you're trying to target um, the neutrons that are coming out of a split mm -hmm. uranium atom are targeting other uranium right. atoms to keep the process going. And, um, and the target is, you could think of it as a target in the, nu in the nucleus to split the, the next atom and keep the process going. In, in the thermal spectrum, the target is wider. Mm -hmm. And so, but you need to slow the neutrons down. So, so you use a moderator gotcha. like water okay. or something to do that. But in the fast spectrum reactor, you don't slow the neutrons down. So hmm. uh, more of the neutrons miss the target, but because there's more neutrons in the process, you still get an effective result. Gotcha. And okay. the fast spectrum reactor is actually better for burning up this waste. No. And so what they basically do is they send it through, uh, they burn up uh, a lot of a lot of the material and they keep sending it through until it's, you know, virtually gone. And the great advantage of this is, is not only have you used uh, spent fuel that wasn't serving a purpose, mm -hmm. but you've also, you've also gotten rid of something that's going to be radioactive for a very long time. So, right. uh, you know, maybe tens of thousands of years and you've essentially burned all this up and now you, what little you've got left over is much safer. Um, you know, that, that's remarkable because, you know, we've used nuclear power. I would argue probably not as much as we could have. I think there's a, I still think there's a lot of fear of nuclear power for various reasons, some more justified, but a lot of it is just misunderstanding. But in the process of the using the nuclear reactors we've have, we've actually kind of built a pretty solid supply of fuel for the next generation of re this kind of salt reactors, which seem like a next generation, more efficient, better, safer, can use all their stuff less. There's just a lot of benefits to them. Right. And, so, and, and we've talked about before about you know, the potential of using, of converting thorium into usable mm -hmm. uranium uh, to, to burn that. In this case, uh, some of the people who are researching uh, these uh, molten chloride reactors, they're saying, you know, let's, let's not deal with the thorium yet. Let's, let's burn up all this waste and, right. and then, we'll, then we'll talk about the other. So. Well, that's pretty fascinating. I appreciate uh, the insight you bring and uh, just recognizing that nuclear waste isn't waste. And we actually have a very good prospect for dealing with all of that, as well as being able to enjoy the green energy that comes out of it. Again, I hope you find this an interesting discussion on what is nuclear waste and why that's probably not the greatest term. But I would encourage you, go to reasons.org and check out Kevin Birdwell's other videos that you can find there.